Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Lifting the Can interview. In this interview today, all about Nefello, you'll hear about the exciting new production, which is coming to Belgrade Theatre from the 7th to the 21st of May. The production reimagined Shakespeare's classic play from the perspective of Othello and Desdemona's unborn twins. In this interview, conducted by the Belgrade's brilliant Jessica Milner, you'll first hear from Justine Femen, who is co-artistic director at the venue. This is her final production in her 18-year tenure at the venue. You'll also hear from the production's assistant director, Joelle Iqua. Link for tickets for Nefello is down below. Hope you enjoy this interview. Can you both please start by telling me a bit about Nothello? What's it about? What's happening? So Nothello is um, a new play by a writer called Mojisola Adebayo. Um, she and I had conversations um, probably getting on for a year ago now about making a piece of work about the experience of being mixed heritage. Um, both she and I are um, mixed heritage. And um, her response to that was to bring Othello as a as a framework because of course that is about an interracial relationship and I suppose the archetypal one where um, that relationship is represented in a, a very um, negative and destructive way um, and there's a big debate around whether Othello should be performed anymore because of the traumatic um, impact he, it has on um, I suppose people uh, um, of colour in particular um, watching it reading it. Um, so that was the, the starting point and it's, um, that all sounds very serious and worthy but it's, it's <laughs> a very funny piece of work, um, humorously deconstructs the narrative of Othello from the point of view of Othello and Desdemona's unborn twins. So it's quite surreal, um, the whole thing's set in a womb um, and yeah it, it's funny so it should be um, a, a good night out at the theatre as well as something that um, deals with um, quite challenging issues. How has the production gone about reimagining the Shakespearean story for a modern audience? So there's, we start with the end scene of Othello. Um, so the actors that are performing it, technically they've performed the whole um, show and we come into it at the very end. Um, and But really that's then it in terms of the Shakespeare that's being performed. Um, it's being watched by Othello and Desdemona's unborn twin son who can't bear it because he's been listening to this for 400 years. So basically he keeps interjecting and trying to stop the play because he does not want it to be performed again. Um, so even that first scene that is the purest Shakespeare in the play is interjected by him sort of trying to stop it. And he manages to stop it just before it finishes. Um, the, the actor that plays Iago, sort of like an actor manager, and he kind of agrees to um, a discussion about the, um, the play and what Nathello, the, the unborn twin, um, then makes them do is start the play all the way from the beginning and um, challenge the different characters and interact with the different characters. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but yes, it, the Shakespeare's <laughs> just the, the, the Shakespeare's really the first scene, and then after that, it's sort of it's absurd a comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a deconstruction of some of the things that we are, I guess, challenging Othello, the story of Othello about about race, about yeah. um, perceptions of um, black and white people dating, and um, the children that come from that, um, and then celebrating. Yeah diversity and everything that we all bring and how much richer we are for it. That was lovely. And that actually leads very nicely into the next question. Um, so the production explores the play's legacy and what it means to be of mixed race. What do you think an audience member will take away from having watched Nathalie? I suppose I'd always, I would always be interested in asking them what they've taken away rather yeah. than telling them what to take away. Um, but I would hope that in the end it's celebratory, that it's about all of us. It's not about only those people who have experience of interracial relationships or only those people who are mixed heritage. It's about 
any one of us because any one of us could find either ourselves in a relationship with somebody from a different ethnicity or culture um, or somebody in our family and having to sort of suddenly be confronted with very different experiences and discovering yeah, the challenge in that but the, um, the joy in that also. So I hope it's something that everybody will find an entry point into and everybody will find an opportunity for um, positivity and um, a sense of togetherness, a sense of oneness rather than separation, which is what we seem to, the narrative that we constantly recreate for ourselves. Yeah. And I think um, so many times, like we focus on um, one race or, you know, we focus on the black story or the other side. And it's just so nice to be in a production where it celebrates bothness, you know, there is no sense of one is better than the other and um when we talk about being mixed heritage it's not just being mixed black and white you know um we have one of the born chorus members for example who is mixed white and irish so that's a mixed heritage in itself it's not one that you know is at the top of the list or may or not visible not right. visible should i say yeah but it's still a, a, some sort of mix and i guess i hope people come out just celebrating that essence of bothness or the mixes in a sense rather than having to choose one side and that bothness starts to spill over into Different gender race. and sexuality yeah. as well not just not race, just race. So yeah. a, 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 a real challenge to the way in which we as a world tend to see each other see things in binaries rather than um in a spectrum mm. yeah that's nice. so well articulated <laughs> <laughs> um and you know that idea of togetherness and bothness um that kind of spills over into the, the whole company as well you know the cast and creative team are incredibly diverse as well and how important is that hugely important <laughs> i mean massive i started off i suppose seeking people out who have experience of mixed heritage or interracial relationships um but that didn't need to feel um it exclusively the case it was important that um people and actually you you tend to find that most people have some connection with that mm. um that experience even if you said it's like you know white irish and white um english or um one of the colleagues that's worked on it is of caribbean origin her husband is nigerian so there's definitely a bothness there um so it is about how we communicate across difference. So having a diverse team felt really important and we've achieved that and it just feels yeah. quite joyful, doesn't it, in terms of the creative process? Yeah, I think everyone's definitely got something to bring to the story, to the production. Um, it feels really lively. It feels like we can draw on one another's experiences and journeys, I guess, in telling the story. And I think you, how you articulated that just then, that's also how theatre operates. I think it's just such a, a, a joyful and special art form because mm. you bring people together from all different art forms, actually, mm. to make, so you have somebody you know, thinking about the music, somebody thinking about the lighting, um, somebody thinking about the choreography. Um, and and uh, as a director and assistant director, we have to think about how we pull all of that together. Yeah. And so you're already working in an environment that is needs to be diverse yeah. and um, needs to be pulled into a, a narrative coherence. So um, a cultural and ethnic and gender um, and sexuality diversity in, in the creative team feels obvious. Yeah. You're answering the question so well in a way that leads into the next question <laughs> so nicely. <laughs> um, so Joelle, can you tell me a bit about what your role as assistant director entails? Yeah, um, my role as assistant director, um, there's so many hats to that role, I guess. But I would say my, my main role is really focusing on the community cast and specifically the born chorus um which is a mixture of a new youth group mem new, new youth group that we formed specifically for this production um mixed with a few older members who have 
who are of mixed heritage who have uh, been in our grade productions in the past and stuff like that so i guess my main role is working with them getting them ready for production many of them it would be their first time being in a production and then a production working with a professional company as well so getting them performance ready um just working with justine i guess in terms of what they need to do what they where they need to be <laughs> that kind of stuff um but also just getting involved in terms of warm-ups, um, getting the whole, I guess the whole company just ready for whatever Justine needs really. Um, it's just supporting in any way, shape or form that I can. And so if that means I'm everywhere, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of are, aren't you? You're sort of the gel because you're in all the professional rehearsals yeah. to know what the Bourne Chorus, the, the community company needs to be doing and then taking that back into the um, community yeah. rehearsals to sharpen them up and then bringing that back into, oh, well, so they're doing yeah. it like this. So it's, it's pretty... Um, and it's good for me as well, like, to be everywhere because I get to see and know everything that's happening but also it's a learning experience for myself as well and um i've learned so much on this journey uh, being an assistant director yeah singing is the other thing oh yeah mm -hmm. and oh, the, the i don't talk about a lot <laughs> um helping with um the singing and getting ready for the songs i guess yeah yeah i heard you singing in rehearsals the other day you really? did <laughs> <laughs> And I guess you've got a quite a unique experience in that you kind of started in our youth group with Justine. Yeah, kind of we have quite a history. <laughs> <laughs> quite a you've kind of grown up with her and also had professional development with her. What's that been like? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> it's strange because just Justine was my first director that I ever worked with. Um, obviously, I started off in the youth in Black Youth Theatre here at the Belgrade, and directing was never. I don't think it's ever it was ever something I thought about when I was young, um, but I always liked the creative process. I always liked knowing what was happening. And so I guess that interest just grew in time and working with Justine definitely helped. I think having that relationship and history has helped even in this production when, you know, we don't necessarily meet every morning or we didn't do a whole load of planning together but because we've worked together in the past I know how she works and vice versa which is how it's made it easy to just work and know what needs to be done really um, in terms of moving from youth group to professional professional work is that right um, I would say it's been smooth because everyone feels like family already but I think just in myself I know that um, She's not just seeing me as a youth member anymore. I have something I need to offer at the end of the day. And knowing that it's not necessarily pressure, but it's like, you're here to do a job at the end of the day. Um, so you have to be on it. Um, yeah, I think just knowing that makes it easy. To and I'd say you, you were always a very proactive member of the youth theatre. So in your approach yes. to playing your role, you would be you know, going away and working on it and bringing stuff back, whereas you know, some people just sort of receive. And I think that's the sort of thing that sort of means you can start, you start to move then into leading a rehearsal with somebody else when yeah. you're just practicing with somebody else. And then you moved into um, supporting youth groups and then starting to run youth groups yeah. and then a shorter project that we um, did together. So it has felt very yeah. smooth, yeah. Yeah, it's been easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Justine, it's obviously your last show for the Belgrade after 18 years of being here. What does that feel like? It's, I suppose it's felt a bit crazy, actually, <laughs> <laughs> because I suppose because of the context. Um, so I suppose in the first instance, what we tr set out to do was try and, um, I suppose quite naturally, but bring together a number of the... Um, things that have felt important to me in my work at the theatre over the time. So um, some of that has been around community and really thinking about how community could be part of a professional production. Um, what we've done very well over the years is make very good community productions. Um, but it's really thinking about how we might co-create some elements of one of our professional productions. Um, diversity has always been important to me. I've sort of led that growth in the um, diversity of the theatre's output 
in community and talent development and professional work over a number of years. So that was, I mean, all of these things are just sort of natural yeah. rather than things I really had to think about because it's how I think and work. Um, and new writing and new writing by women has been another clear element of my work. So I suppose it sort of brought together a number of strands, um, which already, I think, for a building that's just at that pro point of, of the participatory and education work and the talent development work and the professional work coming together in a more cohesive thinking, it's quite a challenge to a building anyway. So that's why it's partly why it's crazy. But then you put on top of that, um, that we're in city of culture, that we've changed leadership, that we're still just emerging and re-establishing post pandemic. It's felt quite pressured, hasn't it? Um, and that brings with it um, a sort of adrenaline also. So it sort of felt like, well, we've just got to keep going and just keep throwing it together and I'm um, doing what we know and um, what both of us um, know works and hope we get there by yeah. the, the 7th of May. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's the perfect piece of work. Montresol has written something that sort of incorporates a sense of that, um, mm. um, the politics and the craziness and the, the joy of um, diversity and collaborative working. So um, it feels like quite a good, um, maybe let's say au revoir, you never know, I might, might propose something else to Corey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I might be ready just to cut all the, the yeah so a question for you both individually what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given oh start from where you're at not from where you thought you'd be and I it's been so right in relation to this show <laughs> because the prep that I would have wanted to have done would have started mm. a year a year before and pandemic, city of culture, organisational change just meant that was not impossible. And also the project only just getting confirmed sort of, yeah, just about a year ago. Um, so I was taught that in my first job, which I sort of see as my apprenticeship, associate director said, start from where you're at, not from where you thought you'd be. And that's just stood me in such good stead. So I never look at something and think, oh my God, or I might do, but I think, okay, that's where we are. I can't be somewhere else. Yeah. What do we need to do? One, two, three, those are our priorities. That might just be the most yeah. advice we've had. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, I'll, I'll take that actually. <laughs> I do. Um, the generation. Yeah. Um, I guess just to believe in your abilities and to believe in yourself like it's so easy um especially like starting out new in this career and you know you're working with people that may have been in the industry for 10 20 years to just feel so insecure and to feel like oh do i know what i'm doing but you know you just have to believe that you know you are good at what you do and believe in yourself and where you've got yourself to i think just remembering that yeah that's good i think they combine quite well because I would say when we went into this, mm. I asked you to assistant direct on this. Yeah. I thought, great, be a really great opportunity to sort of yeah, have a really structured <laughs> relationship, really try and you know, co-plan, mm. um, teach you something about being a director. <laughs> um, and we've not no. been able to do that, but I think it's still been quite, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, you have just gone with it. It's worked because I think prior to doing this, like we were doing like, coaching and mentoring sessions mm. before um, because I was actually going to be directing another show here which didn't go quite as it was meant to go but the way things have worked is like the same experience I would have got doing that I've been able to get in doing this um, and so even though we've not had the time to you know do everything that we wanted to do um, I guess remembering and just believing in myself has helped me through this journey mm. yeah and there's a lot to be, a lot to be learned from those things where you've got five minutes. Okay, we're going to do this. Yeah, hundred percent. Can you go and do that? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Joe had to run the auditions because I got COVID oh when God. the auditions came, so I had to be <laughs> online and watch, and she had to run them and yeah. did. A, yeah. I mean, really great. I knew I could trust her. Um, I knew she was capable, and I knew you were feeling inside. Yeah. Ah, but 
it's just you that's great. a great example of things yeah. like that you know it's very easy to go into a shed and be like oh my god can i do this can i do this because you're all, i'm used to having the comfort of just being there and i have to remember like you know just seems not going to be there in every production that i work at so um even that doing the auditions on my own was a good opportunity to just remember that joe you can do this like it's all right yeah, yeah. it kind of forces you to sink or swim doesn't it yeah, yeah. yeah. i keep forgetting that in my list of things that make things <laughs> challenging i got covid yeah a month before like three weeks before we went into rehearsal yeah. so all that prep time yeah you know, partly i was you know too tired to do stuff yeah. for a period of that and then i had to be at home so yeah but we're getting there we are. <laughs> <laughs> final question why should somebody come and see Nathalie? why should they not see it that <laughs> should be the question <laughs> I mean, I think kind of think we've covered it really. Mm. I think because it's our last show for the City of Culture year, and whilst the City of Culture year isn't what any of us thought it would be because of the challenges of COVID, on the other hand, we've had a joyous opportunity to make work and do things differently mm. at a time when a lot of other places have really been challenged to do stuff. Um, so I think coming and celebrating that with us. Yeah. Um, you know, people that have worked with the um, participatory department of the theatre and uh, artists, you know, diverse artists from the region. Um, you know, it feels like it is a sort of coming together of work that we've done with very many people over very many years and it would be lovely to be able to celebrate that on top of it being a narrative that's about bringing people together, mm -hmm. challenging prejudice and celebrating collaboration. Yeah, I think... Um there's something for everyone, like I said before, um, anyone can take something from this. Um, there's, you know, the professional company, there's also the community companies, like you will be able to see yourself in this play in some shape or form. So I think, yeah, come and celebrate that, come and enjoy the last show with us. Yeah. Perfect. Can I add just one yeah. thing, just <clears throat> just in terms of finishing off your yeah. narrative, because we talked about that journey a little bit, mm. what you're going on to do, because that's a really lovely yeah. next step, that yeah. we are cutting the ties <laughs> between us. We <laughs> are, sadly, sadly. Um, yeah, I'm going on to do um, the roundabout um, tour with Payne's Plow and be an assistant director there on three shows um, as soon as we finish this production. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but even the way that's come about, it's just all a bit mad. But I'm really excited um, that I could get to do that. I think the Belgrade have been amazing in just helping me like even get to that place. Talent development has been great. And a shout out to Hannah because she helped me even with like getting, um, what do you call it? Being self-employed and that kind of stuff, like taxes. God, it's a whole new world out there. <laughs> like even things like that, you know, it sounds really, it might sound really simple to other people, but like I had no clue about these things. So um, yeah, just help with that kind of stuff. I've had a lot of support from everyone at Valgrade, so grateful. So we're both liberated at the same time. We are. <laughs> We are, but hopefully not the last that we'll work together. Yeah, yeah hopefully.